Welcome to this series of videos where we talk to Dr. Warren Corns, who's Research and Technical Support Manager at PS Analytical about uh, mercury and the various issues to do with mercury in the environment and analysis of mercury. So Warren, where does mercury actually come from and, and what's it used for? Well, trace amounts of mercury are present in the atmosphere, in the um, land and in the sea and the weathering of rocks and also volcanic activity can all put, are all natural sources of mercury into the environment. Pure mercury is rarely found, um, although we have observed pools of mercury coming from natural gas wells. So during the production of natural gas, um, you can often get mercury um, coming from the well and then collecting in valves. So that's a natural source of elemental mercury. Um, Elemental mercury is normally uh, extracted from cinnabar, which is uh, mercury sulphide, and that's done by roasting the ore and releasing the elemental mercury. Mercury's always been present in our environment. Um, uh, there's always been natural sources such as forest fires, volcanoes, um, hydrothermal vents releasing mercury. Um, and it's always been present in the foods that we consume which is the um, um, main intake that we have. Human activities have also contributed substantially to mercury in the environment and uh, in increased the levels of mercury in our food chain. Uh, mercury pollution is a global concern and the environmental burden of mercury is now probably three or four times higher uh, than pre-industrial levels. Mercury is used in uh, many different industrial processes and in products and uh, these include um, uh, chlorine products from the chloralkali industry during, for the manufacture of uh, PVC and polyurethane. So a lot of plastics. Yes, um, it's in, the, in the process uh, you have a mercury flowing cathode to produce caustic soda and br uh, from saturated brine. Mm -hmm and uh, this process generates chlorine and hydrogen and sodium hydroxide and each one of those products contains trace levels of mercury and then these are raw ingredients for the petrochemical industry and this mercury will go into all of those products to different degrees. Um, it's also used in uh, small scale mining um, uh, it's for many many centuries um, um, miners have used mercury to um, amalgamate gold um, and then this gold is recovered by uh, heating the um, uh, mixture on a fire mercury vapor disappears leaving uh, gold. Um, it's also used in electrical switches um, such as um, uh, thermostats, relays and um, measurement control devices, thermometers, barometers, uh, even in uh, high energy light bulbs and batteries. Mm. Mercury is also used in uh, dental amalgams. Uh, the dental industry probably uses about 300 to 400 tonnes per year. Do they still use those black or dark coloured fillings? Yes they do. Uh, yeah, dental amalgams contain approximately 50% mercury by mass. Um, and some other metals um, such as 30% silver, tin, uh, copper and zinc and in, in fact uh, small amounts of mercury being continuously released from your amalgams and uh, this is uh, of considerable concern and uh, some countries have actually banned the use of dental amalgams. Really? In fact, when I was here before, you, you actually measured the mercury in my mouth because I've got amalgam fillings and it was really quite high. Yes, uh, you can measure the mercury in the oral cavity. This can be done simply uh, by uh, blowing into one of our analyzers. And uh, we typically find that there's a, a correlation with the number of fillings to the concentration found. And, um, for example, if you've got maybe five amalgam surfaces, you can have up to 10 to 20 micrograms of mercury in your vapour, in your breath. This is rather concerning given that the workroom air allowance for an eight-hour working day is only 25 micrograms per metre cubed. 
So when you consider that you're constantly breathing 24 hours a day this vapour, you could in some cases be over the workroom air exposure. And um, brushing your teeth, uh, people who grind their teeth in their sleep, uh, and also a consumption of hot drinks, all of these actually add to the release of mercury. Um, and so um, our exposure due to uh, dental amalgams is actually quite high. Right. So mercury is also released from industrial sources um, unintentionally, such as the burning of fossil fuels. Uh, coal in particular um, has quite naturally high levels of mercury and it's consumed such large quantities. In fact, the emission of uh, mercury from coal-fired power stations is probably the largest global emission of mercury of all, all types. Whilst there is little man can do to reduce mercury emissions from natural sources such as volcanoes and forest fires, we can actually have a huge impact in reducing our anthropogenic uh, emissions uh, by uh, controlling and regulating mercury emissions from various industrial sources.